Hello? It seems we're online. Right, I'm gonna wait a bit just to see if more people get connected and then we'll get started. Can you hear me well? Right, let's get started. Right, hello everyone, it's Nona here and welcome to the second live stream that I do. This one uh, is going to be about the introduction to the machine learning series that I'm gonna be going through over the next months in an attempt to learn myself and to also teach you and show you as I learn and some other things that I already uh, know that maybe you can find useful to apply machine learning to whatever it is you're doing at work uh, in your own projects and mainly trying to think of machine learning from the perspective of a designer, maybe an artist, uh, maybe an architect. Um, one thing that I would like to mention to everyone is uh, the like button is there for you to let me know when you like the content and for me to know when you want me to make similar content in the future. So go ahead and like if this topic is something that you think you're going to enjoy or things that you want me to produce more videos on and also subscribe if you want to receive notifications when I publish new videos or I schedule new live streams. What's this about? We commented this last week. So this is all about uh, machine learning, but also about design, code, uh, workflow automation, um, habits, podcasting, sketching, writing and more. This live stream is not only going to be about machine learning, but about many of the things that interest me and that I do in my day to day. And we'll see different ranging topics as we move along. The content is not completely closed yet, as you will see, but uh, today we're going to start with machine learning. Why? Uh, I just want to find time, uh, hopefully every week or every two weeks to connect with you. Uh, create tutorials, uh, automate workflows, and learn more. And also, I would you know, like to say that this is going to be probably a from one to three hour format. Uh, it's going to happen um, once a week or once every two weeks. The content is going to be defined as we go, but for now we'll start with a machine learning series and, and some other content. And I also take suggestions. So you can add comments to this video or maybe comment on the chat if you want to hear um, about specific topics or you want me to, to go in depth into specific things in the future in this video or in future videos. And I'll also be recording these tutorials and then later uh, clipping them and uh, posting separate videos uh, as separate YouTube videos on, on my channel. Another thing that I will do is that I will add timestamps or how YouTube calls them uh, chapters for you to be able to skip the areas that don't interest you and, and browse on the timeline of the video to make sure that you can get the most out of this. Uh, okay, let's get started with the machine learning series. Let's see what I have prepared for today. Um, for this series, uh, in general, um, we're going to cover uh, many different topics that have to do with machine learning, conceptually, and hands-on coding, image classification, object detection, image semantic segmentation, and many other things. Today, specifically, we're going to see an intro to machine learning, to this series, 
We're going to go and get hands-on coding with Python, Anaconda, and Jupyter Notebooks. This is something that we're going to be using throughout the series and that you're going to need to know at least a bit to be able to, to use the things that we learned here. And we're going to look at some of the main machine learning frameworks. Uh, for the coming weeks, some ideas that I have, I really want to prepare a sketches data set with my drawings uh, for StyleGAN and maybe try to train that in, in Google Colab or Runway. We'll see what those are. And also building a suggestive drawing app. We previously did a prototype in Glitch, but I would like to do something a bit better, maybe in using web technologies like React or maybe continuing the work that I did previously for the iPad. Um, many of you have asked me what I would recommend for start getting started with machine learning and artificial intelligence. This is my Bible. This is what I'm going through. I, I actually have it. I have it here. So, uh, this is the book that I would recommend uh, you to get if you want to get hands-on with uh, machine learning. It's a really heavy and long book that I haven't gone through entirely, but this is something that is helping me interiorize many concepts, many terms, and also algorithms, what they're good for, when to use some of them and, and how to get to actually training them and using them. As you can see, it says hands-on machine learning with scikit-learn, Keras and TensorFlow. We'll see a bit more about what those are later. And in particular, this book is for TensorFlow 2. So previously they had the TensorFlow 1 version, but they just updated this year or, or at the end of last year for the latest TensorFlow API. You have a link there. So you have a link uh, below here um, at nono.ma slash book slash hands-on ML, or you can simply Google the name and, and find it. They have a Kindle version and also a, a physical version. And something I didn't add here, but that you can also see if you go to nono.ma slash ML, there is a list of resources. Uh, we can actually see them right now that I have on my website that I put online for some people who, who ask me um, about uh, recommendations on uh, what to look at if they wanted to learn machine learning, right? So how to get started with machine learning? I update this from, from time to time. So we have here uh, Stanford cheat sheets. These are really useful PDFs uh, put together by the Amidi brothers. So uh, Afshin and Sherving, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. And you, know, you can see uh, there's a lot of concepts that uh, we're gonna see in these videos that are uh, shared in here. So, you have, for instance, if we go to convolutional neural networks, um, there are many, many uh, diagrams here that can help you understand many of the concepts that you need to know or at least understand if you want to uh, get to use uh, machine learning and have a good understanding. Things like ReLU or activation functions or you know many, many of these things, hyperparameters, um, filters, connected layers, disconnected layers, convolution layers. These are all concepts that, you know, you need to know and, and are good. Uh, okay. So these charts are there also on, on the links on this page. We also have the, the hands-on machine learning book that I just mentioned. So you can, you can learn more about it in here as well. I also recommend usually to go to open source tutorials that maybe the TensorFlow community has created or, or go to uh, machine learning networks that have been open source that you can learn from and, and the paper publications. Friendly user interfaces. This is something that I haven't talked about yet, but Runway and other platforms are trying to make machine learning more accessible for creatives. and maybe you can get to use machine learning without having to know how to code. Uh, in this series, we're also going to use these sort of tools, but we're also going to get hands-on with coding. I, I actually have an interview with Cristobal Valenzuela, the, one of the co-founders of, of Runway. Uh, there is a talk here that explains a bit more in depth how I understand the, the use of those tools in design. Uh, courses, I'm following 
online this course. I'm watching the classes and it's really instructive. So I'm learning a lot about convolutional neural networks. And these other two I haven't gone through, but seem really promising. Um, some other videos I have, um, some resources. So yeah, that's here at nono.ma slash ml. Okay, let's get back to, to our slides. So what is machine learning? This is something that maybe you've heard of, maybe you know how to describe it, maybe you don't. I tried to come up with a quick description based on, on this book. Machine learning is the science of adjusting the behavior of programs that learn from data by providing them with examples. This means that there is a program that is able to change how it works and what outputs it provides just by changing the data samples that were given it. This means, for instance, if you have an algorithm that recognizes faces and recognizes three people, let's say Mark, Peter, and John, then you can retrain it and adjust the behavior to recognize different faces by showing it now three pictures of, I don't know, maybe uh, Maria, Peter, and, and uh, Pablo, for instance, right? So it's an algorithm that gets to adjust the way it works just by samples. And we don't have to change one line of code. The writer of this book defines it as the science and art of programming computers so they can learn from data. And a more general description from Arthur Samuel back from the 1950s is that machine learning is the field of study that gives computers the ability to learn without being explicitly programmed. The part explicitly programmed here is super important. It means when you explicitly program a machine means that you're hard coding or typing with your hands all the instructions, all the uh, rules or algorithms that the program has to do. Here, we just have a general approach or a general set of, of behaviors that then can be adjusted. For instance, that behavior could be recognize objects as images or recognize exactly where objects are on an image, but not uh, recognize that a car has maybe a wide proportion and, and a, a low height and, and then a certain shape, right? It learns from the features on the image, on the data samples. All right. So we're going to start uh, really hands-on today. Uh, and I can see already people talking on the chat. And we're going to start with uh, something that is going to be the foundations of what you're going to need if you do machine learning in 2020. You need to be able to code in a programming language. Python is the programming language of choice, I think, in the machine learning community at the moment, even though there are more and more and more programming frameworks and libraries that are either being ported, which means the code is being rewritten in a different programming language to other languages or uh, programming um, frameworks that are thought mainly for other platforms. One idea that comes to mind is that Apple made a framework to write neural networks and train them and use them in iOS devices like iPads and iPhones, probably in the near future on laptops and computers. And also TensorFlow, for instance, can not only run in Python, but you can run their models later, exporting them to TensorFlow Lite in embedded devices or on the cloud or many platforms. So Python is a programming language. Anaconda is just a program that allows us to create uh, sandboxes, sandboxed environments that are called. This means that you create a space in which you can install certain dependencies that you need to run your programs, but they don't get installed in your entire machine. You can create an environment, you can uh, configure it and you can run your programs there and then you can delete it or get out of them and, and leave them for later use. This is super useful because that means that uh, you can have multiple environments for different algorithms that require different sets of libraries or versions of the frameworks that you use and things like that. And then Jupyter Notebooks. Jupyter Notebooks are Similar to what's commonly known today as a, as a playground for Python, it's a friendly place where you can put uh, code blocks, blocks or cells of 
programming code that you can type and then get executed and see their output below. And this is something that we're going to see today. So let's get uh, started. Um, if we see, okay, so later we're going to see Google Colab. That is a segue into this. So let's get started with hands-on coding. So let's get started right away with writing code and, and we'll, we'll get back to, to other topics later. So for today, in this um, tutorial, I, you know, I prepare a few things I'm going to show you right now. We're going to see uh, Jupyter notebooks. So I'll zoom in a bit so you can see this. And later we'll see machine learning frameworks. Um, so the first thing that you need to do to use Python and Jupyter notebooks and Anaconda is that you need to have them installed in your, in your machine. So for me, I already happen to have everything installed, but what you would do on a Mac, at least there are different ways to install these things on Linux and on, on windows is that, uh, we can make sure I would do, let's say, so how would we install this? So we'll, I use homebrew so to install my, my system dependencies. So if I go to brew.sh, this is homebrew is what they call the, the missing package manager for Mac OS and Linux on windows. There is something called uh, chocolatey that is a, a, a bit of a different, uh, approach, but similar It's also a package manager for, for windows and you can install many things with them. Here with um, Homebrew, what you do is that you just say uh, brew install and the name of the library that you want to install and then everything gets done automatically on your system and then you can also uninstall them pretty straightforward, pretty easily. So first thing you will do is brew install Python uh, that, you know, we already have Python installed in this machine, so I'm not going to do that. Uh, but you can say brew info Python to, to get information about the Python that I have installed here and know that, you know, Python has a specific version of my system. So this is Python 3.8, but I could install different versions and I can install also different versions in different environments in case that we need to run different Python versions for one machine learning model and for other program, we need a different version. So I have Python. If I do Python, um, dash dash version, uh, we, we get the, the version that is running. And if we do Python two version, Mac also ships with a Python two version for legacy programs that run with older versions of Python. Second thing that we needed is Anaconda. So this is here. So I think if I do Conda version, I also have it installed. I think you will do brew cask install Conda. Don't ask me too much about this cask part, but it's something that it's like a separate repository, I think, of uh, programs that get installed uh, somewhere else. But this is this means that we have Conda, Conda installed. And um, the last thing we need is Jupyter. So let's see if we also can ask for the version. So yeah, we have a lot of stuff here. So we have Jupyter Core, Jupyter Notebook, Console, IPython, IPyKernel, Jupyter Client, Jupyter Lab, MB Convert. There are many, many things here. The core ones are Jupyter Notebook, well, Jupyter Core, and we're going to use Jupyter Lab today. Other things that we're going to use are IPyKernel that allows you to expose um, your environments from Conda as um, Jupyter Notebook kernels, which means that allows you to uh, run the notebooks in on the cloud or on your Jupyter notebook with that environment. And I also use MB convert that lets you convert, uh, directly convert Jupyter notebooks into Python files, um, which, you know, we're not going to discuss today what that might be useful for. Um, all right. So let's get started here. So we said, you know, once again, as a recap, so Python version, Conda version and Jupyter version, everything's installed here. We're going to go to the desktop. I'm going to make a folder with today's date and uh, live. We're going to, uh, actually I created a repo on, on GitHub, an open source repo. So if we go to, to this URL, so github.com, so that's github.com slash nonos plus life. And, you know, we should be able to see 
to see this repository, which is empty right now, but that I'm I'm going to clone uh, locally to be able to just push everything that I do there and you have access to it. So I'm just going to clone uh, this repo. You can also click here in, in download zip if you're not familiar with Git. And, and we're going to leave this here. And now if I open my my desktop folder, well, we just we can just see it here. I clone this live this live folder, right? So let's zoom in a bit. This live folder, and it contains only what's on the uh, repository. So we're just gonna go there. I don't know how that's gonna be organized, but for now, we're just gonna create a folder. So make a directory that's going to be called um, today's date um, Jupiter. All right, so we have that folder there. And the first thing that we can do to start from the end is open Jupyter. So I can say, we could say open Jupyter notebook, which will execute, um, you know, run. Uh, I think this is a node.js process that then automatically opens this. Let me see if I can drag this, opens this window uh, on my on my computer so let's zoom in a bit so you can see so this is Jupyter running on my system and I can create a new notebook you see I can choose some different uh, Python kernels here so we have Python 3 3.8.5 64-bit or TensorFlow 2.2.1 this is something I created today and I'll show you later how to do that so if we go to this one so we just open a new notebook with the Python 3.8.5, the first thing we can do is write some Python code. So I can say, for instance, here, hello, Jupyter. And I can click now, well, I can either click here on run or I can click on shift return. As always, I think you can, well, doesn't tell you the keystrokes, but yeah, so run run cell and insert below shift well this is not uh yeah so run cell and select next shift enter right that's what i normally use so i press shift enter and then this prints so this code executes we can now write more code here so more python and say uh for example a number equals 35 for instance and if I do shift return then that variable is allocated so the 35 is allocated into this variable name and now if I do here this a number that prints this value you can also do this so you can also just end a cell with a variable or a function that returns something and then it will output that number right so this is actually printing, but this, as you can see, 35 is the output of that cell, which is because we've put a variable here. And, you know, we could do now here something like a number, uh, 100, and then it's 135, and then the next cell already has that updated value, right? This is just running Python code in here. We're gonna um, cut these cells with X, so I press on the cell and press on X, and then this deletes the cells. And we're gonna, you know, for instance, add a, like create a function that adds two numbers. So returns A plus B. I define the function, shift and enter. And then here I can call add uh, 30 and 20. And that returns 50, right? So simple, it's just executing Python, sort of like a Python repo, but in here, um, so you know the alternative ways and of of running Python would be, so I'm on this folder that I have this untitled notebook, we're just gonna call it um, test notebook. And now that gets, that gets renamed on the folder. So the normal way, well, all the different, there are many different ways to run Python code. One is this one. So you have code in a cell and you execute it. The more common way to write Python is to create a file. So that we can say code um, script.py, for instance. So this is a, a Python file. 
Um, I open it on, on Visual Studio Code. This is my, my code editor of choice. And I can say print hello Python inside of a script file, right? So I, um, I can now save this. And from here, I could do Python script.py. And now this prints or executes a program that we're actually uh, printing there. So same thing that we did before, we could copy this function. And add two numbers. And now run this script. Right, so 20 plus 10. Another way um, that we can run Python is here on the on the console. So I can do Python Python dash C and then uh, in between quotes I put the code. So each line here, so each line goes separated by a semicolon, and then I can I can click enter. So this will execute import Python in, import TensorFlow as TF print TF dot version. I click on enter. So now this is loading the TensorFlow library and will return the TensorFlow version that is running here. TensorFlow version is 2.2.1. Same code, you know, that we've done before we could do here, Python dash print. Well, here we'll have to escape. Hello. Yeah, and that, that executes. And there, there are some other ways. The last one is a REPL. So the REPL is like a dynamic environment or like a, uh, like a, a runtime where I can do this sort of thing. So A and now it, it returns similar to what we were doing before. Right. So now I have, uh, well, I don't know if this is going to work. Yeah. Well, you can execute code live in there. All right. So. Getting back to uh, the notebook, so we have this Jupyter notebook. This was this is the old version of Jupyter. I think the next, as they call it, the next generation of notebooks is what's called Jupyter Lab. So I'm just gonna go and press here Command T to open a new tab and do Jupyter Lab instead of Jupyter Notebook. What this is gonna do is exactly the same, but with the newer version. So this is Jupyter Lab and not Jupyter Notebook. This resembles a bit more to Google Colab if you've used it. And we have exactly, I mean, almost the same capabilities, but just a few nicer UI and a few more things that, that we can use. So I can now start a terminal, text file, markdown, or, or other files, or start a console or a notebook with a specific Python kernel. So I can click on notebook, for instance, and click here, or I can open, open an existing notebook. This will sound familiar so it's exactly the same like this but just the ui is different and you know as i modify something here you can see oh add is not defined so i run this cell before i executed this one this one and this one right so that works and you know now these two files are with mismatch but i can update and let's see i can save you know it's actually loading the same file Here you can shut down the kernel, close the file, and then reopen. And now we have that here. Okay, so I'd rather use Jupyter Lab than Jupyter Notebook. Just wanted to show that different. And you know that's what it allows you to do. So it allows me to create what's called uh, a notebook. So this is the extension of notebooks. Is I P I N B uh, Python notebooks and execute their code. So I click here, I hide that toolbar and I'm going to close here and, and there. All right. Uh, we were going to see, so I'm not going to teach Python here. There are many courses out there. And if you're not familiar with it, there are many places. We'll see some features of Python in these videos, but not going to learn it from, from scratch. And what I wanted to show now is uh, Anaconda. So Anaconda is going to let us uh, show uh, different, uh, create different environments. 
in which our Python code can run and have different dependencies installed. A dependency is a package, so it's something that you need to run on your environment. One of them is, for instance, NumPy or SciPy or TensorFlow or scikit-learn. There are many of them. Uh, for the purpose of this course, we'll use TensorFlow a lot. And let's see how you would create one of those. The first thing that you have to do is, as we said before, make sure that, um, that you have um, Conda installed. Let me just see if I can remove the image working directory. Just want to try to, to remove this part here, but it seems like we cannot do it right now. All right, so let me just move this folder. Somewhere else. All right, so what are we doing now? So we're, we're looking at the Anaconda's version. So we see that it's installed. And if I used, you know, I have a few commands here. So we used Jupyter Lab and Jupyter Notebook. We saw that we have Jupyter installed. And, you know, now uh, we could we could expose different kernels in, uh, from Conda in, in that Jupyter Notebook to be able to use different versions and different dependencies. And what we're gonna do now is see, because we know that we have Conda installed, we can do Conda and list. So we get a, this error, ignore it. This is just a, an Anaconda version that they have to fix in a newer version. But this command, conda and list, uh, returns this, this output here. So we have a base environment that is the, the base environment of Anaconda. Everything you install there is going to be globally available every time you have this base active. And the TF20, so 221 is an environment that I created customly before, so I created it today. Uh, how do you create an environment? So you can create an empty environment or like a default environment if you do, um, I think it was conda create name and then uh, sample 01, for instance. So this collects the package metadata for the default uh, versions of what we need to do and now it asks me, you know, it tells me what it's going to do. It asks me to, let me just move myself here. So it asks me to confirm that I want to proceed. I say yes. And now this just creates that environment. Now, if I do conda and list, I see a list of the existing environments in my computer. And we can see that this sample 01 environment now exists. So the first thing I can do to use it is conda activate sample 01. Now we enter and base changes to be sample 01. We're live inside of that Anaconda environment and uh, we can actually list um, what dependencies are installed here. Uh, let me see how to do that. List linked packages in Anaconda environment. So we do conda list and name right on the list there are no custom packages installed here and we can now install custom ones so we could do let me see conda install and for instance we're gonna okay let, let's first start let's say we open up our python repo so we do import tensorflow as tf what happens here It's probably gonna work because we have a TensorFlow version installed on the base. Yeah, so it worked. And I can do now TensorFlow, so TF version. And it tells me that 2.2.1 is installed. Uh, I'm gonna now try another thing. So let's say we say import, um, let's just go on the web and, and look at Anaconda 
for example, TensorFlow. This describes what we need to do to, to create an environment with TensorFlow and what we need to do to run it, maybe also to have TensorFlow GPU and, and other configurations. There are many, 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 many packages here. So let's just try to go to home. Let's see if we can find some random random packages. Let's say, I don't know, like PDF. Let's see what we get. All right. Well, this is not what I wanted to do. So let's say, let me see if I can, if I can search here. So Conda search TensorFlow, for instance. So I'm just trying to see, let's identify a package that is out there on the internet that is available that we can use and that we don't have. So let's see that we don't have it and that we cannot run anything with it, install it, and then um, try to see how to install different versions in different environments. All right, so we can search for TensorFlow. Let's search for PDH Plumber. That is a package that I know exists out there. Uh, probably not with Conda. Okay. Okay, so what I can do is I can say now Python and we'll do import PDF Plumber, for instance, right? Let's see what happens. So PDF Plumber is also installed in my system. Uh, what's a package that I might not have? So to do, do popular Python packages. Pendulum request, IQT, pandas, let's see, pandas. import pandas as pd, right? So we'll do in a script, so we'll do import pandas as pd. No model name pandas, right? So what we can do now is get out and we're still in sample one, we do conda search. Well, actually, let's see if we can pip search pandas. Pip is the, is the package manager of Python packages. So it's a, it's, it's a package manager of Python. And here we can see we can see different versions listed. So we can see, for instance, yeah, where is the, the basic pandas one? Oh, there are many. All right. Okay, so what we will do to get pandas here, so it doesn't complain that we don't have it, is that we say um, Python dash m pip install pandas. And this is gonna make sure, so it's gonna download the package, it's going to extract it, it's gonna install it in our environment in this case. If you were to do this on your machine without going inside of a conda environment, it will just install it in your computer. So it will be available anywhere. And you probably would, mess around with your initial setup if you have dependencies that that program depends on that are newer and then get updated. So this um, environment management with Anaconda is, is the best way to, to do this, to manage these dependencies, There, even though there are other ways. All right, so we've installed pandas and if we now do import pandas as PD, um, we see that this doesn't complain, it's loading the library. And I can now, you know, when this ends loading, completes loading, I can click on PD and say, okay, model pandas from blah, 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 right? And and we can, I probably see the, the version as well. 1.1.3. All right, so we have pandas and this is on our sample environment. And now we wanna go into our Jupyter lab So Jupyter Lab, we're gonna go into our Jupyter Lab and see if we can use pandas there. So to use pandas, it needs to be installed in the Python environment that we're using at the moment. 
All right, so we'll just delete everything here and say import pandas as pd, pd version 1.1.3. So that's the environment in which we're running this, this notebook. Uh, okay, and that's got installed in our system or was installed in there. How do we manage different versions? If we're going to have different versions of an algorithm in different uh, environments. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to remove the, the sample 01 environment that we created before. And we see that that doesn't exist now. So let's now to test that this is working. Let's now make a environment that has an, well, I'm, I'm going to stop for a second. I want to say hello to anyone who's uh, connected live and I want to hear where, where are you connecting from? I, I just want to hear a bit more about who's, who's watching at the moment. And we'll see here. So if I do, for instance, conda environment create name and I say, let's make an environment for uh, TF, uh, maybe let's try, well, let, let's go and see, we were searching before search TensorFlow. Uh, we have many, many, many versions here, right? So these are all old versions. Well, I'm searching in Conda, so let's just do pip search TensorFlow. Right, many, many different packages. So the package that I'm looking for is the base TensorFlow that we can see on github.com, TensorFlow, Tensor, TensorFlow. And I'm gonna go to the releases page. Uh, so you see the last release version of 2.1 was 2.1.2. There's also 2.3.1, 2.2.1. So we want to create one environment for each of these versions. So for the something, something two, something, something, so one, something, something one. All right. So we're going to say conda and create with the name TF, for instance. Um, and we, I'm going to make sure I delete the one that exists. So we don't mix with the stuff that already exists. I'm going to delete this one. So conda environment, remove name TF221. And we'll recreate it now. All right, so that's been removed and I'm going to make conda environment create tf212. Invalid name, uh, let me see. Hmm. Try the format user package. Oh, okay, so we need to remove the M word. So conda create name tf212, right? Yes, so this asks us if we wanna create it, but we can do conda create name tf. Now it's gonna be two point, so 231. Let's say yes to accept everything. So it doesn't ask us if we wanna proceed. And now conda create name uh, 2.2.1 so tf221 yes and now we do conda m list and we see that we've created um three environments so it's tf212 221 and 231 and we want to install those different versions in there and then expose them as uh, python kernels to use them in jupyter notebook just to be able to have the exact version that we want in a Jupyter notebook and run machine learning algorithms. All right. First thing, let's take a look here. So it's really simple. So the IPy kernel function that comes or program that comes with Jupyter lets us do this thing. So we just say IPy kernel install for the current user and then the name of the kernel that we want to show on the Jupyter lab and we'll be installing the environment that we're in. So if we're on TF221 at the moment, we'll be 
exposing that kernel with the name that we specified. So let's do, um, yeah, I don't know how to remove this part from here so you don't see all of this text. But at least this is better. So Python M, IPy kernel, install. Uh, for this user and then the name would be for instance tensorflow 2.2.1 right and I'm gonna copy this because we're not inside of the the right environment so we'll do conda m list and we're going to do conda activate tf221 so now we're inside of the right environment we paste and then this is TensorFlow 2 to 1. We expose it, install kernel spec TensorFlow 2 to 1 in the kernels folder. Let's just do that for all of them. And then we'll go to JupyterLab to make sure that that's worked. So we'll do uh, conda activate tf3, what is it, 3 to 1. three, two, one. And then we'll do this with three, two, one. So we've exposed that kernel as well. Conda deactivate to go out. Conda activate TF two, one, two. Uh, oh, two, one, two. And now we just do the same two, one, two. And we expose that kernel. All right, so this, you know, there's something funny here. It's that if I go inside now, so do Jupyter Lab, uh, there's something odd here because something is gonna seem like it's not working, but it's actually working so far up to what we've been able to do. So we have the kernels here. So successfully did expose 2.1.2, 2.2.1 and 3.2.1. But there is something that some of you might already have realized and is that we haven't really installed anything. We haven't installed TensorFlow. So if I, you know, create a notebook with this kernel and now go to the launcher, create a notebook with this one and then another with this one. So I can do import TensorFlow as TF and print the TensorFlow version. So we execute that there, we execute that there. And yeah, what do you think this is going to, to return? So let me just take this out. Think about it. Think about what this is going to return right now. And now we can see it. So it's 2.2.1, 2.2.1, 2.2.1. Even though we're in 2.1.2, 2.2, and 3.2.1. We've just created four different Python environments and named them in a certain way, but we haven't installed anything. We could do it here, so we can actually do the installation here, but I'm gonna do it in the in the command line. Uh, what we would be doing is first deactivate, so we go out. And now I'm gonna open three different terminals. So we do the process sort of in parallel uh, a few times. So on, on the first one, well, let's, let's actually, yeah, we'll, we'll reformat a bit. Let's see, so that, that. Okay, so we have three, three different consoles here. And we're just going to say, so let's see what we have here. All right, so we're in base in all three. And what I'm going to do now is first conda activate TF212. Second conda activate TF221. And here conda activate TF321. So I have the three environments. Three, two, one conda activate. So conda M list. Okay, 231. Mm. Conda activate TF231. Let me just make sure. 
yeah, this this might be I might have done an error before. Let me make sure. Yeah, so I'm going to remove, I made an error here, it's 231, not 321, so I'm going to do Jupyter kernel, well, we can do it with Python M, IPy kernel, uninstall, name, TensorFlow, 32.1. Hmm. Hmm, let's see how I did before. Kernel spec uninstall TensorFlow three two one. Yes. Okay, now that has disappeared so we're gonna do is do it right so python m install for this user and the name is tensorflow 231 so that we make sure no model name install yes it's too late ipy kernel install okay so we just done that uh, installed all right now we're good. So now we have the three environments in three different um, windows, and we're going to install the corresponding Python version. So we can do here pip, uh, well, Python and pip install TensorFlow and then equal equal 2.1.2. Here in parallel, we can do, oh, call no final version satisfy so requirement 2.1.2 is not available on pip even though it's here 21 days ago all right uh, pip let's try with this one python m install tensorflow 2.2.1 this so we'll just focus on these two and then this one P, uh, so python pip install tensorflow 2.3.1 hello seems we have more people online where are you connecting from all right so we have installed uh, tensorflow 2.2.1 on the left and tensorflow 2.3.1 is installing on the right and I'm just going to go to the other kernel and see what versions are available. So we can maybe install a different version 2.2.0. So we'll do Python m pip install TensorFlow 2.2.0. Hey Ashkan, how's it going? Nice to see you around. Where are you, where are you connecting from? I'm glad that you find this awesome. All right. So now we have the, the three environments installed. So we should be, we should be good to go. This one is finishing installing and we're just going to verify that that is actually working as, as we mean it to be working. Let's see if this ends. So this should be ready, should be ready. And we'll wait for a second for this one. Okay, while, while this is getting installed, I'm going to see what happened to our Jupyter lab session. I don't know, I'm just gonna close it, make sure that everything's working fine. And we're gonna open, while this is getting completed, I'm just gonna open a new window with um, our live repository. Okay, the 2.1.2 finished. 
and now we're going to do Jupyter Lab. What we're expecting to work here is that we have Jupyter Lab and we have our new kernels that allow us to create new notebooks, but as well have TensorFlow 2.1, 2.2, 2.1, and 2.3.1 in different notebooks at the same time. So I can open this one. I can open this one and I can open, well, we already had notebooks. Let me see where we had the code here. We can open any notebook really and just select from, you know, if you're here on a notebook, you can kill their kernels as it's called. And now there's no, you see, there's no kernel here. So there's no kernel available for this notebook. So it won't be able to, to run any Python code. And uh, what we can do is go exactly there. And now in this drop down, select the version of TensorFlow. Well, the acts actually the, the preferred kernel, but we name them with the version of TensorFlow that we want. So we click select, and then this allocates a runtime for this. Uh, we're going to put here 2.2.1 and here 2.1.2, right? We have three kernel sessions running. Uh, here you can see these, you know, these green dots on the screen mean that I'm this have a kernel on the back end that are running for them. And we have this code. So we're gonna, there is something here to, to clear all output. So we clear all the things that have been returned. So we paste this everywhere and we just, you know, I'm just gonna go and run this here run this here, run this here. So we'll, you know, what we expect to see is the proper version. So let's hope that this has all worked out and, and we're not mistaken. So now it's loading the three different TensorFlow versions. All right, so yeah, as we said, it's not 2.1.2 because that wasn't available on pip, but we decided to go for 2.2.0. This one, oh, okay, so this, this is a, a massive failure. So I haven't, I haven't been able to see why, why this is happened right now. Okay. What's, what's going on here? Um, let me see. Right. Okay. Anyone has any tips because I have tried this before and right now this is not working. Let me just try to see. Um, okay, so we have here this one, so let's see. Okay, so that's good. Yeah, and we don't need to be, we don't really need to be here. So we could verify directly from the, from the, from the Conda environment. So we could say Python. Ha, hmm, something's, something's weird here. Uh, let me just try to do it with Conda. Um, <clears throat> Okay, there's one thing, let me just see which Python. Right, which Python three. Okay, let's look it up. Let's try to solve why this is not showing up properly. And if anyone who's connected has any ideas, I'll be hearing on the chat. All right, so um, install the packages in Conda environment.
All right. Yep, we're one hour in. So let's see. I, I don't want to take too much time. I'll figure this out offline, but let's just try one more thing. So we can do conda create, let's say, tf uh, 2.3.1 v2. And we say here TensorFlow 2.3.1. Let's just make sure. I mean, the target prefix is the base prefix. Conda m. Okay, conda create, conda and create, name. Conda create, df2, 3.1, v2, tensorflow, 2.3.1. All right, not found. Yeah, this is a problem. So sometimes in, in Conda, you won't find certain versions of, of packages, which is really, really annoying. All right, so you get the idea. So the idea of um, Conda is to get a specific um, environment here uh, in, well, I'm gonna try one last thing. So we have here the, the kernel, so I'm gonna activate this kernel here and I'm gonna do one thing. So if you, you know, if the same way that on my command line, I can go to, I can go to, uh, let's say, and we're running out of light here. So let me just pull back one second. Okay, that seems, looks a bit better. Okay, so where was I? So for this live stream, uh, we wanted up to here to try to get um, different Conda environments with different versions of TensorFlow. I just wanted to show that that's um, the, the normal use case that you would uh, use it for. And uh, the same way that I can go to this folder, and say ls to list my directory and see all these notebooks. You see, I'm running commands on the command line. So I can do open dot to open the, the current folder. I can list maybe only untitled files. Uh, I can do many things. I could even remove untitled ipv1, right? So I just remove that and that's not there anymore. Uh, the same way I can run those commands here, you can use in Jupyter notebooks so i can use the the bang here and say ls okay so now that's listing the do, the directory in which this notebook has been uh, run so i can use things like like this i could have a zip command that places a file on my desktop um, uh, like compressing everything that is in this folder so i do that and then that runs you know and i have now this zip file here. So there's a lot of things that we can do as automations that can run on Jupyter that are really just commands on um, on the terminal, right? So we just, we can run that. We can say um, list only the dot files, right? So there's like these dot files here, uh, but many, many, many things, right? So one thing we can do here is see first if pip is installed so you see from within this environment okay and this is this is actually working so I'm glad that uh, we tried to do this because this is actually the one way that I normally do it so what we have here is really important uh, this command when I have conda at least on the CSH the CSH um, uh, the CSH command line uh, it seems like beep is not even here but maybe if we go to bash and do conda activate, well, let me see, conda activate um, tf231. Hmm. Yeah, so that, that's not working for us today. So let's, let's just leave it as an aside, but because this approach is indeed working. 
So I have my versions, I have my different kernels, and what we can do here is see that when I do which pip, the pip that is being used, and also probably the, the Python 3 that is being used is the Anaconda 3 Python. It's not the Python that is installed on my system, it's not the Python that I have installed anywhere, it's Conda 1. So if we do this here, if we do pip install TensorFlow, 2.3.1, so what it says in here, that's now probably going to install in this environment. So let's say uh, get active conda environment. Let's see if the Python process here knows what uh, environment it is being executed in. And, you know, I, I'm just trying to think through to see so let's say current, determining your current environment. So, you know, in, on the command line, it's really easy, but if you do not see this, run this, right? So conda info env's. Let's see if we, if we get that, get this thing. Conda info env's. This one, the notebook is actually installing TensorFlow here. So until it finishes, it won't execute this cell so i'm just gonna go ahead well it just yeah so i'm just gonna go ahead and do it in here in another process so conda info ems um yeah so now we're in phase so we're in the base environment uh okay and probably here yeah that, that's really good i mean knowing the information that we have here uh, is really good because that means that the kernel spec installation is not uh, working properly and that maybe the other stuff was working properly. So let me just go and create a new TensorFlow notebook and say here conda and so info ends. Right, we actually wanted something like this that the kernel actually always uses Conda in it. Okay. I see. All right. Oops. Right. Let me see if I can figure this out. So we go to bash, we do Conda in it bash. No action taken. No change and conda and we're in base and if we do conda activate tf212 you shall new program configure conda activate conda in it bash bash conda in it bash All right, let's just try this. So conda and info ems conda activate tf212 conda info ems. All right, so you see now we are indeed there, but we're not getting pip. So we don't really have pip as we do inside of the notebook. Okay, this seems like it installed and we're still not in there. So, uh, mm, let's see, conda activate tf212. Found no error, All right? Hmm. Okay, so the error right now is that it seems that in here we're using probably is bash because it doesn't let us activate. So macOS conda init bash, no action taken.
All right. Yeah. So for some reason, and I'm going to, I'm just going to make some notes here to make sure that, that we remember. Um, okay. So for Conda, uh, if you're in bash, we need to do, um, Conda source activate. That's what I did. Right. Yeah. And now we can do Conda activate my environment. So we do here um, Conda in it. Bash. Let's try that. No change. Okay. We are now. So we're in Bash and we can do <clears throat> this, which doesn't work. But if we do source activate. Right, this is not working. Managing kernels for Jupiter. So I'm not going to stop until we get this. <clears throat> So this was Jupyter kernel spec install. Let's see how this command is installing the Python kernel. So conda create Python 2 ipy kernel. Source activate ipy kernel 2. Install for the user. All right. Yeah, so it seems that that might be the case like ipy kernel might need, we might need to be running inside. So Python to if you're in Jupyter, you can set up. Okay. So name is the environment and then display name is different. All right. So let's try that just once more. Okay, conda activate tf231. And we now do um, conda, no, so, all right, let's, let's actually get out of this. So, okay, let's start from scratch. Conda, um, so conda remove tf212, 231, 221. Oh yeah, that doesn't exist. Df, df. All right, that's it. So there. All right, now we've deleted all the environments. So there's only the base environment here. We're going to do conda and or just let's just Yeah, Conda create the name is going to be 231 and we're going to make sure we install can we just do this ipy kernel so this is solving our environment asks me to proceed we'll install all of those packages and we're creating a new uh, Python environment that has all of these dependencies. I think I just remember. So by installing the IPy kernel package, 
This is going to allow later for us to export that kernel property. Uh, but yeah, we'll see in a second. Um, yeah, in parallel, we'll do the same for right. So we'll do the same for our other two. We're just going to try it. <laughs> See if this actually, okay. And fingers crossed that this is going to work properly. <laughs> Wasn't meant to be that long. All right. Okay, so recap, we're creating three different environments. And if we go here to condom list, we'll see those three environments are separate. They each have their own packages in their own folders. And what we're gonna, you see there, they've been created here. So it seems like they are now ready for us to use. So again, we're just gonna put them in parallel and try to activate them individually. Uh, so here, conda activate tf two one two. Conda activate tf two two one. Conda activate tf two three one. And now the the thing that is important is to make sure that we're not colliding. So Jupiter kernel spec list. We're gonna be able to see a list of the kernels that have been exposed. So we have this ones. So we just want to delete them again. So uninstall name, I think that was a command. Nope, maybe just uninstall. Yes, 2.2.1 and 2.3.1. All right, now we list again to make sure that there are no kernels or they're the default Python ones. <coughs> and we're gonna go back to our windows. So here, fingers crossed that this is, is gonna work. Well, first of all, we have three different environments. And the first thing we wanna do is just to try here, is pip here. All right, this is good. So when we, when we installed by um, IPy kernel in in each of these ones. What we did, and, and I'm just gonna put this here because it's pretty important. I um, so where is the conda environment? Yeah, so this this service is online, and this is going here. So we do conda create name kernel, and then we also wanna do IPy kernel. This is really important, it seems. So let's let's see if that is what's going to solve our problem. So now if I do which pip and which Python, now this has its own directory. This has its own directory and this one has its own directory as well. So we're going to do this and now we do a Python. Um, well, we actually have pip, so we can just directly do pip install TensorFlow. Ah. Let's see one thing. So we, you can't. All right, yeah, we can't really. Um, so because I have here 2.1.2 and we actually can do that. So we can do 2.2.0. I'm going to do things right. And I'm gonna do and um, remove remove name tf212 so we remove that environment and we're gonna do conda create tf220 
and I buy kernel and yes. So now again, this is going to go through the process of installing the packages and its dependencies. But while that's being done, I'm going to go ahead and say, because we have pip here, we're going to do pip install tensorflow 2.2.1. And we just copy this here, 2.3.1. And we're just going to wait until that gets done. So now we're getting the packages from pipe and pipe and now we can activate this and do the same pip install so which pip pip install tensorflow 2.2.0 2.2.0 and you know the one on the right is pulling tensorflow 2.3.1 the one in the middle is pulling 2.2.1 and the one on the left is pulling 2.0 we actually just made a mistake there. So I want, let me, let me just make this bigger. So 2.2.0. All right. And these should be working fairly soon. So we're going to be able to, to see them. Let's see what happens in our Jupyter lab in the meanwhile. So if I click on here and update, So the reason why I recreated the 2.2.0 instead of renaming is because it seems that you cannot rename an existing environment, but you can clone it. So you can specify the clone command and it will generate a new one. Okay, so our kernels have disappeared. So if I go to a new notebook here, uh, we don't see uh, the kernels and that's, that's good because we deleted them. So we don't really want them to show up there. Um, you know, we're just gonna keep, let me just see. We're just gonna keep this one and we'll actually clear all cells. And we're going to remove everything that starts. So let me just make sure that we're on the right directory and we're not deleting anything weird. So we're gonna remove everything that starts with untitled. And now we're just gonna list, well, we just saw here that they disappeared. Right, so with X, I cut cells, I clean this up a bit. And, you know, this is probably not 2.3.1 because it doesn't exist. So we close, we close, we close. And we clean all the kernels. All right, let's go back once more to the uh, windows here. So. Now we have two of them already. Let's just see. So we're running Python three. So if we do Python and we do Python, I'm crossing <laughs> my fingers that this is going to work. So now this is here. We do TF version and we're just going to do the same here. You know, this in theory now should work, but who knows? computer programming can get fairly tricky. And the one on the left is also finishing, so we're just gonna use the same code. So what's going on? Oh no, what's going on here? Right, I think I'm gonna have to import TensorFlow as TF. TF version what all right okay but let's still let's try uh, with ipy kernel gonna try this so we're gonna try and say we're going to expose so Python as M IPy kernel for user name is TF221 and then display name is gonna be 
TensorFlow 2.2.1. Yep, I'm forgetting the word install. We're just gonna try this, let's see. So this will be 2.3.1 to expose 231 and then 2.1.2 to expose 2.1.2. All right. This now might not work still, but we'll try it. Um, I don't know how, but this morning this all worked and this is what happens with live demos. Everything breaks and I don't wanna give up here. All right, we have this console. We're gonna go to our directory and we're gonna do Jupyter Lab. And it's gonna be the last test. If this doesn't work, I'll figure it out offline and we'll see you next week. At least the, the three um, kernels should appear on the launcher, as we see, TensorFlow 2.1, 2.2.1, 2.3.1. 2 so I open this one and I do, uh, for instance, can I do which pip? All right, it's something really weird. So the problem is that when I execute here, which pip conda activate df 2.1, so which pip actually has this pip, this different one, but it doesn't show up in here. Hmm, why? Base, let me see. One thing that I haven't asked, can you can you guys hear me okay? Is the sound coming through properly on the image? Am I am I laggy or or am I uh, am I moving uh, properly? Okay. This is good. I guess. So let's see, it's different at least. Right, so in here, this looks good. So conda activate tf220, pip list, tensorflow, okay. Activate tf231. All right, I mean, something has worked. This is a good step. So something has worked here, which is each environment has the proper uh, installed versions. So if we do, I'm not sure why this happens. So if I do which Python alias, um, if I do this, import TensorFlow as TF, import TensorFlow as TF. T 
TF version 2.2.1. All right, there is a problem there and it is that we're not using the right Python and neither is our environment. So which Python? That one, pip version. Okay. Uh huh. Python three. That's something different. All right. So if we import TensorFlow as TensorFlow TF version. Okay. Yeah. Found it. I think so. Is this returns two point three point one? We might be under the right track. On the right track. Okay, yay, great. Okay, so it seems like I got to where I wanted to get. Uh, it seems like Python 3, Python 3 is the key here. So we're gonna do it once more. We have the environments and it seems like Anaconda is properly, um, the IPy kernel is properly exposing them on in there, so we're just gonna go open new terminal. And for the last time, we'll do this. So we're going to, um, let me just close and make sure. All right. Okay, so again, so we have conda here. We can do conda activate uh, tf220. Conda activate tf221. Conda activate tf231. And now everything we had to do that I didn't properly did is, I probably didn't do is each of them can use Python 3, which is the Python version that is installed in their environment. So I can see, so if I do Python 3 with pip install TensorFlow, and this is, you know, it's just a guess, I don't know. Well, I mean, this is actually already there. So this is, uh, I mean, we've tried and the, the versions are properly set up here so I can you know I don't need to reinstall anything so it, it worked before when we use pip so import tensorflow as tf and then print tf version so I can do this in my three command lines uh, the three repls and these you know this has to work the same way that it worked inside of the um, of the python notebook and uh, it's taking some time, but you know, we're on the right environment and you see now Python three, that is what we needed to use to make sure that that wasn't erroneous to happen. So this is 2.3.1 seems to load it. The last one was the first one in finishing 2.21, 2.2.0. All right. So that's working. What doesn't seem to be working is when we do that from, um, from Jupiter. So if I go here, what happens if I do now activate base and then Python three Jupiter lab. Oh, no Python, Python three. Because if I go here and say conda activate base and do which Python three, this is Anaconda's Python and not our Brew Python. So yeah, this might work or might not. I'm not sure, but at least we discovered what was going on 
with the other notebooks. So I'm gonna make this a bit smaller. I'm going to start one here. Can I do this? One there, one there. And we do just which Python 3. All right, not working. Not working. And not working. All right. Uh, great. I mean, I'm I'm certain that when I do this, we're gonna still get them wrong. So all of them are gonna be are gonna be the same. But we'll just run it to verify what's wrong. And uh, I'm just gonna go here. And on our 2.3.1 version, I'm gonna try to do this. I'm gonna try to do a PyKernel with Python 3 install name tf231 and then the display name is going to be new 2.3.1 python 3 2.2.1 and what happens if i now use if I update, go to my launcher. Hmm. Python three. Python 3, Jupyter Lab. Huh, okay. So maybe it seems that I did it wrong. That <laughs> okay. Because I exposed all of them from here. So 2.2.0, conda activate tf221, conda, well, we're here already. So Python 3, um, ipy kernel, which ipy kernel? Huh, that's interesting. All right, so once more, we see which Python 3 we have this one. So now we're going to do Python 3M IPy kernel, and we're going to install for this user, name is tf220 and the display name is going to be new 2.2.0 install that one failed to fetch and now we just open a new one here new 2.2.0 and now we do which 
Python and which Python free, right? That's not what I wanted, but all right, nice. Oof, I think that worked. So finally. All right, so I just need to do it here as well. So Python 3 and my pi kernel install user name tf221 display name new 221 and here the same. So Python 3 m my pi kernel install user name tf231 display name equals new 2.3.1 right and after this is done we're just gonna restart Jupyter to make sure we start from scratch and hopefully we get that properly working Okay, so let's close this and now start a new 220, 221, and 231. Now uh, we just put this same thing everywhere. You know, this might not work, but if it does, I will consider this session successful. Yes, <laughs> okay, it's been really hard. And we're gonna now write the notes together of what we've done. So simple, I mean, it's really, really simple at the end. So in uh, CSH, we did um, Conda create df to two, yeah, two to one, for instance, and we did install IPy kernel and we said yes then we uh, said conda activate tf221 and then we did python 3 um, ipy kernel uh, install for this user with name tf221 and display name i will say tensorflow 2.2.1 so what is here um, we should say like if we do which python 3 we should get here this thing so what is this Wrap code, no wrap code. Python, all right. Seed and you know n is for name and then activate our freshly created environment and then uh, verify that we're using the right version of Python and then And then um, 
install our environment as a Python kernel to select it in Jupyter. Right, and then later what we've done is that we've um, start Jupyter with Python 3M Jupyter Lab. All right, just to verify one thing, so to make sure I'm not making up stuff, so we can do simply here now Jupyter Lab instead of Python 3M Jupyter Lab. I just want to verify whether that works or not. So we select our new 2.3 kernel and we run this. Oh, not this one, import TensorFlow, STF, DF version. Um. Nice. And we have a CPU. All right, so I uh, TensorFlow 2.3, Python 3.8, and um, we are not in need of, of this part here. So we don't really need to use this here. All right, so that works. We spend a bit more time that I thought we would with this, but I'm just going to re-record this really quickly. So I'm gonna do it from scratch. I'm gonna get back at zero and start from scratch, at least on, on this part. Mm. Terminate this. We're gonna do conda and remove. Conda, Conda deactivate, Conda and remove. And this, and this. Okay, so, well, I wanna say hi if there's anyone there. I'm just gonna take a, a really, really, really little uh, break and we'll, we'll get back at this in a second. I'm just going to uh, record again the same tutorial, but really, really quickly, like really quickly with the things that we've learned and the things that we know that have worked on how to create custom uh, Conda environments with different versions of TensorFlow. Hey Rob, thanks so much for your comment. I'm glad to <laughs> following along while I do five other things. Thanks so much for being there and I'll, I'll see you in a second. I'm, I'm really glad that at least you can be in between a few things and, and also uh, be there. Thanks so much. And nice to, nice to connect with you. I'm looking forward to learning and, and meeting you guys a bit more.
All right. Well, hello, it's Nana here, and now we're going to see how to use Python with Anaconda to create different Python environments that you can use. In this case, uh, just to exemplify, with different versions of the TensorFlow machine learning framework that you can then expose as kernels uh, for Jupyter notebooks to be able to use. That way you will be able to have Jupyter running different notebooks at the same time with different versions of TensorFlow on the same computer, the same moment, concurrently. All right, so let's see what we need to do that. So we've seen in this, uh, this is part of the machine, machine learning series. And the first thing that we need to do here is to make sure that we have a Conda version installed. So I'll just go ahead and, and just do which Conda to make sure that uh, I have it installed or at least uh, Conda version. So we can see, we can see also what Python version we have. And we can also um, take a look at uh, the Jupyter version we have. Right, so these are the three things we're gonna use. We're gonna use Python, we're gonna use Conda, and we're gonna use Jupyter afterwards to check that what we've done is working. So I'm going to create a new environment. So we're gonna say Conda create, and and then we're gonna say um, TF uh, v uh, two um, two uh, one for instance. And we're going to make sure we want to install the IPy kernel library and we want to say yes for all the prompts to automatically get accepted. So we're going to do that. Um, uh, let's see, maybe we just do TensorFlow slash 2.2.1. And then we go ahead and click on enter. And then we're going to use the exact same command. So we're going to do create another kernel that's going to be Conda uh, create and the name now is going to be TF um, 2.3.1 also with IPy kernel and also accepting all the prompts for the uh, you know the prompts or the questions to get accepted. We see here so we see on the left that we can now run Conda activate TF 2.2.1 to activate that kernel but Bear in mind that we haven't yet installed TensorFlow to that environment. All right, so here it says warning, unable to create environment file, path not writable. Uh, not sure what that's doing. Unable to create environment file, path not writable. Very fine transaction. So yeah, maybe there's something that's failing there that I'm not aware of, but this seems that it was working on before. So we're just gonna copy this command here and activate that and I'm gonna activate this as well so if I look here at my notes the thing that we need to do after activating is use Python 3 so Python 3 is the version so if we do Python here and do version but now we do um, Python 3 so let, let's just run it once again so you see it Python version and then Python 3 version versions are different and it's because they're actually different installations of the same uh, the same program of Python so if we do which Python we see that this is Python 3 that is located at user local Bing and if we do which Python 3 we see that this is part of our newly created environment so we want to use make sure that we use this Python library the Python 3 on our environment to expose our kernel so we can do Python 3 uh, M uh, IPy kernel to use the IPy kernel library to install in our user the uh, TensorFlow in this case 2.2.1 environment and the display name is going to be TensorFlow 2.2.1 and we're going to put here ML, for instance, if we wanted to use this for machine learning. This is just a name that will show up later. 
And uh, now after this gets done, this is a really quick operation. After this gets done, we're just going to activate the 2.3.1 uh, environment and do exactly the same. So we're just going to copy this command. Let's just make sure we copy it properly. And then we say conda activate TF 2.3.1. And now I'm going to run the same command, just changing here 2.3.1 and here 2.3.1. So we run it. We can see that's going to also expose the kernels. All right. And now here, I'm just going to do something that I'm going to delete later from the recording. So I'm going to use Jupyter kernel, kernel spec to list the existing specs. And we see there were more that I created before. So we're just going to do Jupyter kernel spec uh, and install this one, but we're also going to uninstall all of the other ones. So we're just going to do that and install also to TF221, also TF220, TF212, and that's it. So those are all the ones that we created before that we don't want to see there now. All right, so we will list now here. And we'll remove this one as well. So Python, no, Jupyter kernel spec and install this one. All right. So if we now run Jupyter kernel spec list. Right. So now we're going to get back at the tutorial. So I remove until this part. And now if we run Jupyter kernel spec list, we can see the two default Python kernels listed. So Python three and Python 3.85 and also the two ones that we have created. So these are two new Jupyter kernels that we have exposed with IPy kernel. So this is a tool that brings, also comes with Jupyter. So we can see if we do Jupyter version, we can see that IPy kernel also comes with Jupyter. So it's an, a tool to expose or create new Python kernels. And what we're gonna do now is that we're going to, um, let's just try, so if we deactivate, I'm just going to run Jupyter Lab. So this is going to open uh, my my kernel, uh, my Jupyter Lab here, and and we're going to be able to run those those kernels. So we have the kernels here. So we can see TensorFlow two two one and two three one. What I'm going to do now is just create two different notebooks with those and just add this debugging uh, code that I have here to get the, the TensorFlow version. And this is an expected error. So, um, all right, let's just create two different ones. All right, so we have 221 and 231. That's what we were expecting to get. So no model named TensorFlow. We haven't really installed anything yet. So what we do now is that we go first to into 2.3.1. We do Python 3 with pip install TensorFlow 2.3.1. And at the same time, we're going to do conda activate tf221. And inside of here, we're going to do the same pip install, but now TensorFlow 2.2.1. These two are going to be getting installed in parallel. And what they're going to do is that they're going to allow us to have TensorFlow available with these two different versions in our Jupyter lab notebooks. So right now they're not accessible. So we don't even have TensorFlow in these, um, kernels, but after they get installed, we will. We're going to just try in a second as these two finish installing.
All right, so we can't run them yet, as you can see. No model named TensorFlow. And now something has changed here, it seems. So 2.3 normally is being finishing up earlier than 2.2.1. This is still not working. All right, so we'll wait until this finishes. So what we're going to do while this is here, so I'm just going to leave this as it is and I'm just going to close the, the Jupyter kernels that are here. Just going to make sure that everything stops executing and I'm going to leave this clean. So we're going to clean up the outputs of this cell and we're going to go here. So the 2.3 Point one has finished, so we can do Python 3 and make sure that TensorFlow is working here. And we'll do the same when 2.1 finishes. So right now these are two command lines with their proper versions of Python inside of their Anaconda environments and they're going to execute the same tf dot version command after loading tensorflow and we'll see what version each of them has the tensorflow 2.3.1 environment has 2.3.1 installed which is good and the 2.2.1 has 2.2.1 which is exactly what we wanted so it seems like this is working now what we do here is that we go and select the 2.2.1 kernel and in this one the 2.3.1 and we execute with shift enter we execute these cells each of the notebooks is going to load their respective versions of tensorflow and just display them there so as you can see uh, this was successful so we have tensorflow 2.2.1 here 2.3.1 in here we have uh, seen how to use uh, Python and Anaconda to create different Python environments. In this case, each of the environments has a different name that corresponds to the TensorFlow version that we have installed in them. And afterwards, we've used Python 3 command to expose those environments as kernels that can then be used inside of Jupyter to have multiple notebooks running at the same time with different versions of TensorFlow. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. All right, this hasn't finished. This is just me uh, in like wrapping up the video because I'll upload that as a separate video uh, tutorial. And I'm just gonna look quickly what I had next. So I had Google called up a machine learning frameworks. We're not gonna cover the machine learning frameworks part or call up fully today and we'll keep working on them in you know, in the future, uh, but you know, I'll, I'll just go through what it is um, quickly. So you get a slight view of what we're gonna see next time. There are machine learning frameworks that I'll go uh, through in depth next time. So we have a uh, scikit-learn that is built on NumPy, SciPy and Matplotlib. There is TensorFlow, there is the one that we've been trying to install today. Uh, this for production and made by Google and, and a lot of contributors. PyTorch, that is primarily for research and developed mainly by Facebook's AI Research Lab. Cafe by Bear, um, in the Bear Research Group, that is the Berkeley Artificial Intelligence Research Lab. And, you know, I, I had this thing here where you can see their their entire team. So they have this on, on their website right now. It's all uh, Zoom images because everyone's working remotely. Uh, I think from this lab have come many, many good models. One of them by Philippe Sola et al. That is Pix to Pix. Mm. And Keras, Keras by Francois Choyet, a researcher and also a Googler. And it's a Python deep learning API for humans. This is an API that can be used in front of other machine learning libraries such as TensorFlow. And, you know, we'll, we'll see more of that another day. Uh, we're gonna now briefly see what Colab is. Hi, it's Nono here, and we're just briefly gonna see what Google Colab is. If you're familiar with Python, Anaconda, and Jupyter notebooks, this is really similar to JupyterLab, but on the cloud. 
how can we open a Jupyter Notebook in Google Colab? So we just go, you know, this is a normal uh, Jupyter Lab Notebook that is running on my machine. So you can see that I have here TensorFlow and I have the library loaded and I can do things like, uh, I don't know, just create a tensor from an array of three numbers, right? How can we do this on the cloud without having to, to start um, running this on, on our machine? So we can go to, um, yep, so we're gonna leave that. So we can go, and I'll zoom in here so you can see, we'll go to colab.research.google.com and then uh, we'll get this page that loads or lets us create new notebooks. Uh, if we create a new notebook right away on the cloud, we have a Jupyter notebook that is running on our browser and has nothing to do with our computer's backend. So I'm just gonna add here a date to mark that this is something that we're working on right now, live session two, um, Google Colab 101, right? This is Google Colab. As you can see, it's a version that Google did, sort of a fork from a Jupyter Lab. So what we had before running there that you can see in here is Jupyter Lab and is really similar. So it has the same sort of um, functioning, but Google has redesigned and, and remade it a bit, right? In each of these cells, you can add text or code. So when they say text, you can add formatted text so or markdown. So I can do here, um, for instance, Google, Google Cola 101, right? And I press shift enter to execute the cell and then this gets rendered as Markdown. So uh, we're just going to move that up. And if I double click, I can edit. I can say, this is a starter tutorial as part of the machine learning series by Nonoma, right? So that's how it shows up. And we can, we can even add, you know, see links and resources at, and I can add a link here if I want it. So this is fully uh, parsed markdown to, uh, to HTML, right? In a Jupyter Notebook cell, as normal Jupyter Notebook. Now here I can also add code cells. So every time I click, I add a code cell that I can run Python in. So I can say, for instance, A equals one and B equals 10, and I can return on this cell A plus B. So we get 11. And we can do more interesting things like importing TensorFlow. I can do here um, things like this. So I can import TensorFlow as TF and then print uh, the TensorFlow version. And, you know, when we do this, this allocates a kernel on the backend for us and displays the version of TensorFlow that is running on this Python environment. Uh, we can do a bit more stuff here. So we can print the Python version as well and see what we have on the backend. So right now we're seeing here, we have TensorFlow 2.3, Python 3.6.9. We have a CPU and we get some information about the CPU device that we have. What's nice about this is that on runtime, uh, change runtime settings uh, type, we don't have any hardware accelerator. We could uh, accelerate our code with a GPU or TPU. So for now, we'll just get a GPU, which you, we're not going to use, but we'll just see. So now when I um, look at here, well, it, that was really fast. So if I change my runtime and press save, you see that we're getting allocated and new kernel gets initialized. We can see the, um, the, the engine that we're running it on and the memory and, and the RAM memory we have. As, and I want you to look at here right now. So as I click here on uh, GPU and save, so this is connecting, initializing Python connected, you know, really quickly, it finds a machine for you to run this that has a compute engine backend GPU that is provided by Google. So before we had a CPU, but now by running the same cell, we're gonna see that we have Python 3.6.9, so it's higher version, still TensorFlow 2.3.0, but now we do have, uh, apart from the CPU device, we have this GPU XLA device, XLA GPU, right? 
And we could use that to train our machine learning models on the cloud or to do operations with TensorFlow, for instance, that require GPU. All right. 101, this is exactly a Python notebook. And this Python notebook, you can save a copy in Drive or you can download as a Python file. You can uh, do other things there, but you know, if you, if you download this as a Python file, you can just open the code that is on it in your machine, right? So we just have this and, and you will be able to run this code anywhere. And also this markdown is here. If I download the, if I download the, the Python, so the, the Jupyter notebook, I can also open that. I can also open that with uh, Visual Studio, so we can go here, for instance, and uh, go to uh, the downloads folder and go to code. Uh, so let's see what's in here. So code, uh, whatever is with the the notebook extension. So now Visual Studio Code opens. And because I have installed uh, the necessary extensions for, for notebooks to run, probably just the Python extension, I can select a Python interpreter. I can select this one. And after this loads, I'm going to be able to run um, an Olabea. I see that you've connected and load this. So uh, here we can see that the output of the notebook is shown. The markdown is rendered and I can run this cell once again and execute it. So this will load TensorFlow again, print the version, print the version of Python and display the uh, clients that are available at the moment, or the devices, right? That are available on the, on this backend. All right. So while this gets printed, I'm just going to show you a few more things that we're going to see that we'll see on the, on future videos and we'll wrap up. So a uh, quick thing, you know, we'll see a lot of TensorFlow in these tutorials, probably write machine learning neural networks and use SciPy to do classification and other algorithms. <laughs> but something really easy that we can do today is if you have uh, uh, an array in Python, so let's say we encode uh, the information for an image, it uh, could be as simple as um, uh, a one line, matrix so we could say let's see so maybe uh, this the red color the so these are rgb values so the green color and the blue color right so this is an array we return it there it's just a, a python array that has nine numbers in, in what could be a line or, or like a matrix. Uh, it's actually a th three by three matrix. So it has nine values, nine integers. So what we can do with this now is that we can say to convert this image and TensorFlow is going to convert to Tensor. So Tensor is the data structure that um, TensorFlow uses to keep data. Might be a one line array or an image that is a, a to the array or um, higher dimension arrays like um, like three three dimension arrays like voxels or multi-dimensional data. If we print this again, so print the image again after converting it, now we see this is a tf.tensor object with shape three three. As I said, it's a matrix that is three by three and it contains int, right? So it's a shape three three, so it contains three by three is nine, so it contains nine values and we have two five five zero zero that's rgb 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 values uh how can we display this so let's see if you know if we import here matplotlib and we just plot um to show that image we'll just do uh deactivate the access and we'll just try to show that image uh let's see what happens we'll probably you know you, you get that there but um that is actually just displaying the matrix of um, of objects there as an image. So it's actually showing a matrix where this is 255, 
um, and 0, 0, 0, 255, 0, 0, 0, 255. And uh, what we can do here is when we show the image, we can change the CMAP to be gray. And let's see if that works. Yeah, so now we actually get the 255 is white and the zero is black. And we can we can change this, let's get more room here. So we could change uh, without printing this. So let's, let's actually merge these two cells. So we, or, or merge the entire thing. Let's just copy this over to here. So we remove this cell. Okay, so now we can run this. So this is still the same. Let's just change the, um, let's see if I can uh, remove also image bar. Okay. Um, TF move. Okay, let me just Okay, so let's do it manually. So I can put this color instead of being completely black, I can say this is gonna be a, a 50. So 50 means like it's a bit like lighter. So we get uh, gray. And you know what happens here, so I'm, I'm gonna have to put a zero here to get the grays because what this function does is that it stretches the values to go from zero to one. So it will get the minimum and make that zero and the maximum and make that one. And that way it contrasts the image a lot. So what we're gonna do, maybe add this to be 200. So, you know, now we start getting um, those colors to be, uh, each of these is <clears throat> black and white color. But what we can do as well is here, we could say TF reshape, and we can say this is a three by one image with three channels. Right, so we'll say image, and then the shape is is this, and you know I probably need a a whiteboard to to explain this a bit better, but in summary, if we build an image like I had at the beginning, so we have a red uh, R G, so green and blue. And I run this again, we get the red, green, and blue. So this is, we have a one dimension um, vector that, uh, well, actually it's, it's shaped like this. So it has three dimensions on the width. So it has three pixels, one pixel height, and then three pixels in the, um, in the in, so three numbers in per channel. So three channels, three color channels there are the RGB values. If we change dimensions, so now we're gonna get actually the width to be three instead of the height. And, and you know, we can, we can get it back to, to where we were before. So now uh, we could, you know, we could put more rows next to this. So we could say, okay, now I have this, but I'm gonna have here, this to be an array. So we can actually make this a bit more understandable if we do this. Yep, so the shape doesn't match. So now we wanna reshape it to a three by three by three, right? So we have a line that if we change, for instance, this color here, you see, so this value here are the RGB values for this block in there, that cell. And we could, you know, we could leave this like that and maybe say, okay, this is 127 and this is uh, 50 and, and we're just gonna do that with all the colors to fade them to a darker shade of their color, right? So now uh, what we have uh, here is a, a tensor that is getting represented as an RGB image. We have three by three, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine pixels or yeah, pixels or units and then three channels. So the color of this cell is defined by three elements, which are like zero, zero and two to five. If instead we did something like this, this wouldn't work because if we're trying to make an image that is a 2D image, so three by three with one channel, we actually have here 
you know, we have three by three by three, we have 27 elements and that makes for a nine by nine matrix. Um, that doesn't work because uh, it's not formatted properly. And we would have to do this, I think. Let's see if this works. And uh, reshaped, uh, 81. Yeah, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, so nine by nine. Uh, blah, blah. Right, so this is actually three by three by three. So that's 27. So if I do 27, so that's like three by nine, maybe. So that um, invalid shape. Um, mm -mm. Yeah, so to do that, we actually need to probably just get this down here. Let's see first if this works before we do too much stuff. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 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 nine. Uh, okay, one thing that's helpful here. So if we leave that and we print the shape of the current image, we see this at 27 by one. <clears throat> if we wanted to do maybe something with rows, that's a three by one by nine by one. So let's see, three by nine by one. Hmm. All right, so let's just try this and wrap up if this doesn't work. Okay. Yeah, so it seems like it's like that. So what we have is just zeros and ones or like, yeah, okay. All right, yeah, so, you know, you have to shape the data in a way that can be, that can be displayed to be able to make this um, work properly. All right, so, all right, so that was an overview on Google Cold App, and thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. All right. So we didn't get to cover the machine learning workflows, but we'll make sure to cover them some other time. So now, lastly, I'll just come back here and make sure to tell you, so this was the intro to machine learning series. And I'll encourage you to, to like this video if you enjoyed this content and you want me to record more of these sort of tutorials and hands-on coding sessions. And make sure to subscribe to be able to get notifications when I post announcements for uh, future scheduled events where I will stream live and new videos. Um, with that, I will just thank you so much for, for watching. And, you know, let me just close this. Yeah, so thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. I'll just hold on here if there's anyone connected online still and want to ask me anything or, or want me to, to comment on anything quickly before I go.
All right. If there are no more questions or no more comments or anything, uh, I'll, I'll wrap it up. And thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Probably next week or in two weeks, we'll do the next live stream. Thanks a lot. Bye.